Dr. Ben Bickman, BYU, Plagues of Prosperity, Part 1. We are sick. Worldwide, we are dying from diseases that were once unheard of. Each year, roughly 10 million people die from cancer and 20 million from heart disease. Alzheimer's disease affects almost 50 million people, and half a billion of us have diabetes. Less lethal, though highly relevant, 40% of men over 45 have low testosterone, and 10% of women experience menstrual irregularities and infertility. All of these disorders, and more, have one thing in common. Each of them, to varying degrees, is caused or exacerbated by a change in the actions and levels of the hormone insulin, a condition known as insulin resistance. And you might have it. Odds are you do. It is the most common disorder worldwide, affecting roughly half of all adults in the USA. In fact, answer these questions to yourself. Do you have more fat around your belly than you think is healthy? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have high levels of blood triglycerides? Do you have patches of darker skin or small bumps of skin around your neck, armpits, or elsewhere? Diabetes mellitus is an insulin disease. In these early stages, insulin is elevated, but blood glucose is still normal, a state we know as insulin resistance. Heart disease is the leading cause of death. It encompasses numerous cardiovascular disorders, including hypertension, cardiomyopathy, and atherosclerosis. There is more than coincidence that insulin resistance is the most common disorder worldwide, and heart disease is the most common cause of death. If someone is moderately overweight and has hypertension, the person is almost assuredly insulin resistant. Through five known distinct mechanisms, insulin resistance causes pathological changes in the way the heart and blood vessels function, creating a series of unfortunate events that culminate in an elevated blood pressure and increased effort with each heart contraction. Compared with having normal insulin levels, elevated insulin increases the risk of heart disease by roughly 40 times. But what of the brain? Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia worldwide and more ubiquitous every day. <clears throat> Once again, we may be tempted to see only coincidence between the most common form of dementia and the most common health disorder. In fact, the connection between, between Alzheimer's disease and insulin resistance is so strong that many people consider Alzheimer's disease to be an extension of type 2 diabetes, occasionally called type 3 diabetes. This, of course, means at least to some degree, it's one more manifestation of insulin resistance. As the brain becomes insulin resistant, its ability to utilize glucose for fuel is diminished. As a brief aside, other neurological conditions appear to share a similarly compromised ability to use glucose as a fuel for the brain, including, to differing degrees, migraines, epilepsy, depression, and even some instances of autism. A final disorder connected with insulin is of broad interest, body fat. In 1923, Austrian physician scientist Wilhelm Falta noted, a functionally intact pancreas is necessary for fattening. He further documented that the most efficient way to fatten a human, calorie for calorie, was to include abundant amounts of food that increase insulin, which is created in the pancreas. Many scientific reports reveal that insulin therapy significantly reduces metabolic rate, accounting for as much as 30% of the fat gain. At this point, you're expecting me to give you a clear, simple solution, and here it is. We must control insulin to control metabolic health. A scientifically sound strategy to control insulin is based on adjusting macronutrients to favor sources of energy that have the smallest effect on insulin. When carbohydrate is consumed in the form of pure glucose, very similar to eating a refined starch or sugar, insulin dramatically increases to well above 10 times over normal and, depending on the person, can remain elevated for several hours. 
Though this can vary, when a person eats pure protein, insulin will usually increase slightly over normal levels for a time. Remarkably, fat consumption, in contrast, has no effect on insulin. Summary. Insulin resistance is at the root of many modern chronic diseases. Signs of insulin resistance include fat around the belly, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, patches of darker skin. When insulin is high or very high and glucose is normal, you could be in insulin resistance. Elevated insulin increases the risk of heart disease by 40 times. Alzheimer's disease is an extension of type 2 diabetes. Compromised ability to use glucose as fuel causes migraines, epilepsy, depression, and some instances of autism. The most effective way to fatten a human include abundant amounts of food that increase insulin. Insulin significantly reduces metabolic rate, accounting for 30% of fat gain. We must control insulin to control metabolic health. The effect of macronutrients on insulin. As you can see, eating carbohydrates spikes insulin. Eating protein and fat have little effect.